Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the September meeting, board meeting of the uh, Urban Development Corporation doing business as Empire State Development. Uh, for those who don't know who I am, um, uh, my name is Kevin Law, and I've been the chairman. I got confirmed uh, uh, in June of this year uh, by the New York State Senate, uh, who I thank, and uh, very grateful and honored that uh, Governor Kathy Hochul has uh, asked me to be the chair of this uh, great agency. Um, so uh, also very nice to see people in person uh, for the first uh, time since at least I've been here. And I understand it's uh, the first live in-person board meeting in about a year, but and there was only one in the last couple of years. So hopefully this is the beginning of uh, regular uh, in-person meetings again, despite how, you know, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, convenient uh, the virtual meetings can be. Um, <clears throat> three hour drive in, thank you. Um, but uh, it is uh, now uh, very, uh, again, honored. Uh, great to see you all. What I'd like to do first is just uh, acknowledge um, and have you know, each of the board members who are here today uh, introduce themselves. And then I'm going to ask uh, the rest of the staff uh, and people here to uh, introduce themselves so everybody knows who everybody is and be helpful, to, especially to me as well. Um, so I'll start with my right. Hi, I'm Sherry Gleed. I'm the Dean of the Wagner School of Public Service at New York University, and I've been a director for a little over a year. Great, Sherry, nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm John, John Wong, uh, Asian American Business Development Center. Uh, I started also June of this year. Great, John. Are we about the, about the same time we both did. That's right. So we'll be colleagues together. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And I'm Hilda Rosario Escher, and I'm the former CEO for Ibero-American Action League, a non-for-profit in Rochester, New York. And I have been in the board for, mm, I don't remember, <laughs> years. A few years. Yes. Great. Benson? I'm Benson Martin, sitting as designee for Superintendent Adrian Harris of the New York State Department of Financial Services. Great. Well, um, uh, welcome all. I'm going to visually recognize a quorum uh, of the board. Uh, so again, I look forward to working with all of you. Uh, and then Kevin, if uh, we could start with you and we go around the horn and just have the staff uh, introduce themselves, that would be terrific. Sure. Kevin Eunice, the COO with ESD. Noah Raymond, Chief of Staff for Commissioner Hitt. Ms. Luskin, Executive Vice President, Small Business and Technology Development. Uh, Ray Salaburios, uh, Senior Vice President, Small Business Technology Development. Simone Bethune, Senior Project Manager with Bones and Grants. Joe Taswell, New York City Regional Director. Matt Bray, Treasurer. Bray Orlando, Chief Financial Officer. Felisa Hockeiser, Director of Compliance. Goldie Wexel, Acting General Counsel. And Hope Knight, President and CEO of Empire State Development. It's my privilege to lead this agency. Great, thank you, Hope. And how about uh, Debbie? Oh. <laughs> Not just in nice. this. <laughs> right. we'll go I'd like to add. Carly Galenius, Steve. Nice. My name is Anna Kiwi. I work for the IT department. Anna. Rich Cagliano, SPP Marketing at ESD. Very good. And who do we have over there? Uh, Brendan Healy, Vice President in Bones and Grants. Okay. I'll do one more. Scott oh, I'm sorry. Indian, uh, Director of Special Initiatives. Very good. All right. Well, well welcome all of you. and. Um, while I've only been chair for the last five months or so, um, I did co-chair uh, the Long Island Regional Economic Development Council for the last 11 years. Nicole, uh, you hear me uh, listening to the call on the phone? Hi, everybody. Have you, you dialed in on the uh, line? Could you please mute you your you lines if you're on the line? Am I bothering you're you? You're coming in live on our uh, meeting website. Is that a staff person or, or is, is that a... Somebody from the public. Thanks so much, everyone, for muting your phones. Thank you. You will inform me about the There you go. Go. As Debbie mentioned, if you are participating um, virtually, if you can mute your phone or your iPad or your <laughs> PC, whatever it is you're using, please. Thank you. Well, as I was saying, while I've only been chairman for the last five months, I've been involved with ESD for the last 11 years as a co-chair of the Long Island Regional Economic Development Council. And so uh, very familiar with um, 
uh, you know, ESD, very familiar with um, a lot of the programs uh, that it runs and operates and familiar with a lot of the key staff people. And uh, my observations over the years, uh, as well as during the last few months, that um, uh, UDC, DBA as ESD has a terrific staff. Um, you know, people are very professional, very competent, very accommodating, uh, very responsive, and uh, you know, have a lot of unsung heroes um, uh, throughout the agencies. And I've been in and out of government. Um, you know, I've spent about half my life in the public sector and half my life in the private sector and um, always come across great, hardworking people in government. Sometimes people who work for government get a bad rap. Uh, but I um, have seen uh, terrific staff people here. And so I look forward to continuing to work uh, with them. And, um, and I think Hope has built a great team with our additional staff, so look forward to working with uh, Hope and her team as well. Um, so we are going to uh, get right to uh, our agenda. Uh, first item on the agenda uh, is the approval of the minutes from the uh, July 21st, 2022 meeting. And um, uh, we do not have the August board meeting minutes yet, uh, but we'll approve them hopefully with this board meeting minutes at our September, uh, our, our October uh, meeting. Um, so uh, the minutes have been circulated. Um, I will move them. Second. There's a second. Are there any uh, revisions, additions, or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the minutes? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Uh, and now uh, um, it gives me my, a great pleasure to introduce our president and CEO of um, ESD. And again, I've had the pleasure of working with Hope. I was c collaborating with her, you know, since the governor nominated me. So it feels like uh, close to a year now. Uh, but again, we are so fortunate to have Hope uh, with us. And uh, again, wherever I go, I hear nothing but good things, I hope, about you, whether it's from staff, whether it's from other people in government, elected officials, and people in the business community. Uh, so whatever you're doing, keep on doing it, uh, because uh, I hear nothing but good things. And Hope is now going to give her a president's report. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning, directors, and welcome back. It's great to see you in person. Uh, since the last time we've met, I've continued to visit more regions around the state. I attended opening day at the New York State Fair with Governor Hochul. It was great to see the crowds and the midway buzzing again. And I also stopped by my favorite booth, the I Love New York booth, <laughs> organized by our tourism team. It was also a chance to spend some time with more of our regional staff. I was also in Buffalo for the groundbreaking of the new West Side Bazaar. This is a one-of-a-kind small business incubator that serves women, minorities, refugees, immigrants, and others who don't qualify for traditional banking services. This is, the bazaar has been incredibly successful with a wait list of more than 125 aspiring business owners. The new building will have five times as much space as the current location, and I'm really looking forward to the project's completion. I also visited the Southern Tier, where I toured the future home of Battery New York at Binghamton University. Earlier this month, this new facility was one of two projects in New York State and only one, uh, only two of 21 in the entire country that were awarded funding through the America Rescue Plan's Build Back Better Challenge. I had the privilege of representing Governor Hochul and the entire ESD team on a Zoom with President Biden where he announced these awards. Battery New York will receive nearly $114 million in state and federal funding. This initiative will be a cutting edge technology development, manufacturing, and commercialization energy storage hub. ESD's Western New York Regional Office was also awarded $25 million through the Build Back Better Regional Challenge. The proposal includes projects that will scale up advanced manufacturing strategies to spark innovation, support workforce development, and develop infrastructure. The plan will be implemented through the Regional Council in partnership with the University of Buffalo Regional Institute. Congratulations to them, and thanks to Governor Hochul, Senators Schumer and Gillibrand, President Biden, and Commerce Secretary Raimondo for their support. 
On Tuesday, the governor announced the launch of New York's seed funding program. The $200 million fund is the first of its kind in the nation and will provide flexible grants to support early stage small and micro businesses in New York State. This program builds upon our existing $800 million pandemic small business recovery grant program, which has delivered more than $639 million to over 35,000 small businesses since it launched last year. Very proud that 90% of the funding has gone to minority and women-owned businesses. As the funding winds down due to the overwhelming success of the program, we are encouraging all businesses who've started their applications to finalize their materials before the application period closes on September 30th. The businesses we seek to support were among the hardest hit by the pandemic on the economy. This has been a priority of Governor Hochul's administration and something that I've discussed often with legislature, local government partners, and business groups throughout the state. The new seed funding program continues New York State's commitment to broadening our economic recovery. I'd like to thank Liz Luskin and Grace Halibarios and the small business team for making this program a reality. And lastly, I hope that you all had a great Labor Day. Uh, Labor Day means the uh, beginning of fall on the horizon. Uh, yesterday, I Love New York issued its first fall foliage report of the season. <laughs> it's one of the most popular things that our Division of Tourism does every year. Each week, they compile reports from more than 85 volunteer spotters across the state. So people uh, write in and tell us, you know, how the leaves are changing <laughs> and we're we'll able to post that every week. That's great. Uh, this is also coupled with I Love New York's new fall campaign, highlighting some of the great family-friendly ways to enjoy the season. And of course, you can always head to our website, ilovenewyork.com, to find out more. And with that, I conclude my report. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much, Hope. Uh, do any board members have any questions for Hope? Where should we go to see the leaves now? <laughs> <laughs> you can start now, right? <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, thank you, Hope. Uh, we'll continue on with our agenda. Uh, we have some corporate actions we need to uh, address today. Uh, first up, uh, we'll, we'll hear from our treasurer, uh, Matthew Bray. Um, and uh, Matthew has a report and I think something that we need to approve. Where yes. Thank, thank you, Chairman Law. And good morning, directors. We bring this item to the board every year because public authorities law requires annual approval of the investment report. The report details, among other things, the ESD investment guidelines, results of the annual audit, and the investment performance for the 2022 fiscal year. This year, we propose to change the investment guidelines by adding language in Article 3 and Article 4 that addresses the state's objective to achieve a net zero investment portfolio by 2040. We have spoken to the state regarding the changes and have incorporated their suggestions. As shown in the report, the portfolio currently meets the goals that consists of short-term investments in Treasury and U.S. agency securities. Total investment earnings for the 2022 fiscal year were $2.4 million, compared to $5.3 million in the prior fiscal year. The decrease is primarily caused by the low interest rates that began with the COVID-19 pandemic and continued until March of this year. In order of our priority, the portfolio reflects our focus on preservation of capital, providing liquidity for funding obligations, and return on investment. For the 2022 fiscal year, average investments for $4.4 billion and the average maturity of 99 days and average weighted yield of 0.05%. The full report contains more detailed information. Your approval of the investment report and the amended investment guidelines is requested. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Um, I have one question for you. Do our, do our guidelines um, uh, sort of follow uh, what other state agencies or state authorities do, or was there any uh, input from the New York State Comptroller's Office as we you know, prop, you know, uh, produce these uh, guidelines? Yes, the guidelines, as we had prior, were uh, similar to what the other agencies had, and uh, we do follow the uh, what the controller's office recommends right thank you um, 
All right, this requires uh, action. Um, I will move it. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, any comments or questions from Matthew on this? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Uh, next up, um, our new Vice President and Director of Workforce Development, I believe, uh, Amber. Uh, Amber Rangel. Is she with us? Hi. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, well, welcome aboard, uh, Amber. Look forward to meeting you in person. Excellent. Thank you. Likewise. Um, the directors are being requested to approve the program guidelines for the Office of Strategic Workforce Development's new capital and working grant program. These guidelines have been developed in consultation with other state agencies, businesses, and workforce development organizations to establish a workforce development policy implemented by ESD that better targets the needs of industry and makes training and educational opportunities equitably accessible to New Yorkers from historically marginalized communities. These programs and ESD's relationship with employers in targeted economic sectors, through these programs, excuse me, through these programs and ESD's relationship with employers in targeted economic sectors, the Office of Strategic Workforce Development seeks to create industry-driven training that provides in-demand skills and direct job placement, producing new economic opportunity for historically disadvantaged populations and serving the labor needs of the state's highest growth industry sectors. The two programs are being funded through the fiscal year 2023 Workforce Development Statewide Initiative in New York State Budget Appropriation. In the Workforce Development Capital Grant Program, $35 million is available for grants that will help fund the modernization of existing training centers, building new facilities, or purchasing of machinery and equipment to facilitate, to facilitate uh, for workforce training. ESD will provide grants of up to 50% of the total project cost with awards ranging from $100,000 to $3 million. The Pay for Performance program has $95 million available for two funding tracks. The first will provide operating grants that can be used for a variety of working capital and are programmatic expenses related to new program or expansion of an existing program, such as curricular development, instructional materials, technology, marketing, and or trainee support. ESD will provide up to 75% of total project costs with funding awards between $50,000 and $1 million. This funding could be used for activities not typically served by other sources of federal, state, or local funding, such as those available through the Workforce Investment and Opportunity Act, WIOA. The second track of the Pay for Performance Program will provide workforce stipends that reward workforce training providers for direct placement into good jobs. Stipends will be provided in the amount of um, $1,500 to $4,000 per person placed and must be reinvested into the program to expand its capacity. For both the capital and pay for performance grant programs, applicants will be required to demonstrate they have established partnerships with industry partners in need of training, and applicants serving historically marginalized communities will be prioritized as will those providing training in one of the state's targeted industry sectors in a regional, regional tradable sector as identified as a priority by the regional councils. Both programs are expected to launch in early October and program guidelines will be publicly posted uh, on our website by September 30th. We will also be providing uh, frequently asked question documents for, for programs to provide further guidance and for preparing applications. ESD will be internally managing the application review process and, and execute and ex execution of funding awards, which will occur on a rolling basis with the first awards expected to be announced in December, 2022. Great, uh, thank you, Amber. Uh, either Amber, you or Hope, um, just um, a, a little confusing. Um, ESD is taking on a big responsibility now with workforce training, but Department of Labor will still be doing some workforce training and will be doing other workforce training. Is there, you know, could yeah. you describe the difference between what ESD will be doing and what Department of Labor will be doing? So the Department of Labor will continue administering its workforce development programs. Our workforce development programs are really tied to the initiatives that we fund, you know, jobs of the future, innovation, and that's going to be the focus of our workforce development funding. Great, that makes sense, and uh, that sounds a, a great answer. And uh, but does saying we're, just, we're taking on a new big responsibility. Right. We'll right. be hiring people uh, right. for that, in addition to Amber to help us with that. That's right. Great. Um, anybody else uh, have any questions for Amber or Hope on this? Is that the program that has the wraparound services? That's right. That is correct. I mean, that is fantastic. Was that your idea? 
Well, we, we wanted to make sure that we could reduce the barriers to entry for folks to access employment. So we want to think about things like childcare and transportation. I am and all so those excited challenges. about that because you know over the years we serve a lot of uh, people in marginalized communities and transportation and daycare uh, were a big issue and you know people in those communities can't get a job why because the jobs are in the suburbs uh, so having a program like that kudos to you and to the governor uh, for this initiative. Yeah, we're very excited. Thank about you it. very much. No, it's great. Uh, Governor Hochul uh, understands that uh, child care is an economic development issue. Absolutely. And it's a business issue. And it's not just a family issue. It's a yeah. very important business and economic. So uh, it's great that she's uh, uh, supporting all those programs and it will be helping her implement it. Uh, great. Any other questions? If not, uh, I will move these guidelines. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, thank you, Amber. Uh, next up, uh, Patricia Bailey. Uh, she's our Vice President of Digital and New Media Development. Hello. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm presenting today to request an update to the guidelines of the Empire State Diversity Job Training Development Fund Program. Created in 2019, this grant program is designed to incentivize job creation and training programs that support efforts to recruit, hire, promote, retain, develop, and train a diverse and inclusive workforce in the motion picture and television industry within the state of New York. This program provides funding for organizations to develop novel programs to train individuals involved in the principal creation or the editing of a film or television product, create a pathway to jobs and connections with employment and or union partnerships, Further diversify the employment in the motion picture and television industry from a socioeconomic, regional, and diversity perspective, target residents in economically distressed areas of the state, and ensure that New York State has sufficient workforce in order to meet the demands of the growing industry. The maximum grant amount for any eligible project is $500,000, while the minimum grant amount is $25,000. Funding for this program comes from a portion of the film and television tax credit and is currently over $3.2 million. ESD has received feedback from potential applicants like community colleges and other smaller educational institutions that the current two to one financial matching requirement, that is an applicant was required to provide $2 for every $1 of grant funding was not feasible. The ineligibility of state and federal funds to be used as part of the matching grant was also discouraging. The revised guidelines make program modifications to promote, to promote a broader array of applicants for program funding. Among other changes, the matching ratio will be revised to a one-to-one -one match to reduce the cost burden on applicants, and state and federal grant funds will now be eligible for matching funds. The guidelines also now clarify that grant recipients must provide an element of classroom and or structured training programs, as this grant is not intended for an apprenticeship or hands-on only training. These guideline updates will also be reflected in an update to the program regulations. Subject to the director's approval, the corporation seeks to adopt the revised guidelines immediately. Based on the foregoing, I recommend that the requested actions be approved. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you, Patricia. Does <coughs> anybody have any questions for Patricia on these guidelines? And as you can tell, you know, the board plays a very important role in setting the guidelines as staff then executes and implements all these programs. So it's very important that we have guidelines and uh, that these guidelines uh, be approved by us. Uh, so hearing no questions, uh, I will move the item. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Uh, thank you. Uh, Patricia. Uh, next up is uh, uh, Elizabeth Luskin. Uh, she's our Executive Vice President for Small Business and Technology Development. Elizabeth. Thank you. Good morning. Um, as you'll recall, at the August board meeting, the directors approved uh, ESD entering into the allocation agreement with the U.S. Department of Treasury for $501.6 million under the Federal State Small Business Credit Initiative. ESD is now returning, as we promised, to the board for approval of the first of 
first six of the 10 specific programs ESD will be implementing under that agreement. These six programs are being presented as three items, two individual debt programs to be presented by Ray Salabarios and a suite of four equity programs to be presented by Jennifer Teagan. The remaining programs, four on the debt side, will be presented to the board at subsequent meetings this fall. Thank you, uh, Liz. Um, so uh, does that mean we'll hand it over to Ray? Yes. The first item? Yes. Ray, good to see you in person again. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to start by just highlighting how important the initiatives we're going to discuss are uh, to small businesses in the state of New York. The, the 2022 Small Business Credit Survey, a collaboration of all 12 Federal Reserve Banks, provides timely information about small business conditions. Some of the highlights of the survey were that pandemic continues to have a significant impact on firms, with 77% still reporting negative effects from the pandemic at the time of the survey. 85% of the firms experienced financial challenges in the prior 12 months, up nearly 20 percentage points since 2020, and really discouraged firms, the majority of which are socially and economically disadvantaged owned, believe that their firm will not be approved for financing, believing that traditional lenders are too strict or financing do not approve their type of businesses. I highlight that to, to continue as we move forward with the program that we believe will address some of the concerns of small businesses in New York State. The New York State Small Business Revolving Loan Fund will use $55.5 million in federally allocated small business credit initiative funds to support shorter term financing needs. The fund addresses inequitable capital access with targeted lending to address the financing gaps facing new companies underbanked communities, and small businesses which are more likely to be minority-owned. Loan capital will be utilized to create economic activity by providing greater access to short-term capital to businesses that are historically unable to obtain such capital on the terms and conditions that make, help them grow their business. On November, on November 18, 2010, Empire State Development's Board of Directors approved the initial rendition of the Small Business Revolving Loan Fund. For over a decade, the Small Business Revolving Loan Fund program has used 14 lenders to leverage an initial $23.4 million investment into nearly $280 million in loans issued to small businesses throughout the state. Of those loans, 98% were to small businesses of minority-owned or women-owned businesses, and it is anticipated that this rendition of Small Business Revolving Loan Fund with a larger capital base will have even more success in the outcome. Applications for are expected to be made available to existing CDFIs on or about October 1st, 2022, with a request for application issues for new participation. ESD will, be, will allocate program funding based upon the CDFI's anticipated needs, their historical ability to utilize the funding, their previous compliance to the program's parameters, and their current financial standings. The, the directors are requested to authorize implementation and administration of Small Business Revolving Loan Fund and authorize the making of Small Business Revolving Loan Fund loans and authorize the taking of related actions. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Ray? Great. Can we uh, approve both items in one resolution or do we need separate uh, actions for each one? Uh, separate. Separate. All right. So first item, uh, I will move. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Uh, Ray, proceed to the second item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The next item is the New York State Capital Access Program. The New York State Capital Access Program will utilize $29.4 in federally allocated state small business credit initiative funds for loan loss reserves to participate lenders that support access to capital for small businesses across the state. CAP will provide for financial institutions match funding for loan loss reserves for loans to small businesses that otherwise find it difficult to obtain regular or sufficient bank financing. ESD will conduct outreach to broaden the participation and range of financial institutions in the program. Staff looks forward to working with these wider base of access points to financial resources to serve the even greater financial needs of small businesses, especially socially and economically disadvantaged individuals owned enterprises. Small businesses need working capital. They need funds for the acquisition of machinery and equipment, funds for strategic planning, marketing, technology upgrades, business renovations, and support for typical operating costs. The directors are requested 
to, sorry, let me just go back. Let's see. The director requests to approve the use of CAP funds to support and provide loan loss reserve to small businesses throughout the state of New York. So those funds can be accessed through the different agencies that, or how? What we did was we expanded the lending base. Okay. So we've been in contact with the independent banking association, for example, and those are the eight, that's the agency that really handles the small businesses, the small banks, community banks, banks with $10 billion in assets or less. We've increased participation with CDFI credit unions and regular credit unions. So what we want to do is just broaden the, the base of uses so that small businesses can go throughout the state. It's not just really dependent on CDFIs. So you can go to your local bank, credit union, CDFI credit union, and access these, the assistance needed. Thank you. Ray, can you talk about um, the outreach um, to small businesses and um, you know what efforts we make uh, because I often come across small business, uh, and I, t I start talking to them, and a lot of them, you know, they've never heard of ESD, UDC. They're not used to taking advantage of any government, you know, uh, type programs. And so, um, how do we reach uh, them? We we will continue um, our partnerships with chambers of commerce throughout the state. And we'll continue our partnership and make sure that we continue with dialogues with banks, CDFIs, credit unions. We are beginning a road show, which starts next week. Where we're going to every region to the state and have meetings with the, the community members, the regional councils, to let them know about these programs as they are being rolled out. So the idea is we are also going to host webinars. And just really get out there. And I agree with you, um, Commissioner, that there are, um, there are times that folks don't know about all the programs that we offer. Right. And we're going to really impact that by making sure we get the word out, <clears throat> especially in rural communities. We want to make sure that we go upstate, north of the Mario Como Bridge, and get the word out. You know, so like St. Lawrence County, Niagara County, where historically, they, again, they're saying, we don't know about these programs. So we're pinpointing that and make sure we take actions to address that issue. Great. I think that's great, and especially using the regional uh, REDCs and using the local chambers. Um, but having just run a real big chamber for, say, Long Island that I did for the last 10 years, um, while we have a lot, a lot of members, there most companies aren't members. Right. And the same thing, a lot of small companies are not members of chambers of commerce because they're uh, they're running their businesses 16 hours a day, and they don't have time to go to meetings and stuff. And so, we got to figure out a way, I think, to, you know, reach out to all those small businesses who don't participate in uh, chambers and you know councils and things like that. So, if we could, uh, you know, figure out a way to penetrate that, I think uh, uh, we'd have no problem uh, utilizing all these funds. So, uh, good luck with your outreach Thank you. and, uh, it's glad to hear John. Yeah. I thought one suggestion maybe is the reaching out to some of the ethnic medias and a lot of small business, you know, certainly rely on the ethnic media to for information so that, you know, that could help to, to spread the word perhaps. Yeah. I should have mentioned the fact that we do have advertising dollars. Yeah. So we will be in the papers and, and making sure the word gets out because you're absolutely correct. A lot of folks use these media assets that, like you said, um, many folks, they just don't have time to be members of a chamber of commerce. Right. So it has to be, we have to find another way to reach out to them. And we're working on that directly. Uh, Rich Gagliano is here now is really helping us directly with that, with our marketing and making sure that we do reach those small businesses that may not be members of chambers or business associations. Right. It, it, Social media is, is of paramount importance in this day and age. We're going to exercise digital media assets as well as the print assets and the partnership assets and really trying to meet businesses where they are. Very, very both, good. I think both, correct me if I'm wrong, Ray, in both cases here, folks may be benefiting from these programs because they're not getting loans from ESD. We right. provide resources to the CDFIs and they inherit right. right. loans. So we may do a backstop to the loans, the loan loss. So both of these programs, for certain, are not direct to, no. to the, we're working with the lenders. We're working with the lenders yeah. here. Yeah. Got it. Okay. But, but we do have other programs, you know, uh, we have plenty of other programs that, 
yeah. and small businesses oh, okay. are direct applicants for yes. it. So, uh, so all the comments that we made still applies uh, sure. there. But Kev, thanks for that uh, clarification. Absolutely. Very good. So, um, uh, any other questions for Ray on this? All right. Um, we have had uh, we've, the, the votes we've taken so far. Um, we have received no comments from the public, and I failed to mention that. And similarly, on these two items, we have not received uh, any uh, comments uh, from the public. And of course, if uh, any directors um, have any potential conflicts with any of these items, uh, uh, that um, we just voted on, which I don't believe we did, uh, or any uh, upcoming items, uh, you know, please uh, disclose that for the record. So, uh, so for the second item uh, that Ray just briefed us on, uh, I will move them. Um, is there a second? Second. second. Um, any further comments or questions? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Uh, the motion carries. Liz, uh, what's next? Uh, is are we going to now hear from Jennifer Teagan? Yes, Jennifer Teagan. <coughs> is she with us in person? Center. No, she's upstate. Okay, Jennifer, the floor is yours. Hey, right. good morning, directors. I'm Jennifer Teagan, the managing director of New York Ventures, dialing in from Ithaca, New York, where it is still quite green. <laughs> Looking forward to the fall foliage happening up here. Um, the directors are being asked to approve four equity investment programs that total $219,367,643, related also to the state small business Cre credit initiative that was part of the recently awarded allocation from the United States Treasury to the state of New York and Empire State Development for small businesses. The directors approved this allocation on August 18th, and now we are seeking approval for the equity programs as managed by my team at New York Ventures, as well as that of my colleagues, uh, Matt Watson's team at NYSTAR. New York Ventures currently actively manages a direct fund as well as overseeing several other funds managed by partners that provide direct financing for innovation businesses in the state of New York. These new funds from the U.S. Treasury have been designed to further improve our equity programs so that there is even greater opportunity for more equitable access to capital for any high-growth entrepreneur in New York State, no matter where they're located or what their background is. We expect that this equity capital will serve to encourage innovation and fuel economic growth well into the future for our state. The four programs that I um, am asking for authorization for today include two multi-fund programs and two direct fund programs. For the multi-fund programs, we're requesting authorization to use $102 million to establish the Emerging and Regional Manager Multi-Fund, which will provide funds to support the growth and establishment of diverse and emerging private sector and regional fund managers, who will then use those funds to invest in high-growth startups across the state. We will be seeking fund managers both in New York City as well as those who are interested in helping us to further develop the innovation infrastructure in all regions of the state. Second, we are also requesting authorization to use $52 million to create the Community and Regional Partner Program Fund as managed by my colleague Matt Watson at NYSTAR. This program will be used to select accelerators and provide those, accel those programs with funds they need to support the very early stage entrepreneurs and their companies as matched by private sector support across the state. The funds will be used for both general accelerator programs as well as to evaluate opportunities to create industry-specific accelerators that support critical innovation in areas of strategic interest and strength to the state. The two direct fund programs that we're seeking authorization for, first is a $30 million pre-seed and seed matching fund program that will allow us to work with angel groups and pre-seed investors in New York State to continue to support high-growth startup companies at their most vulnerable and early stage of growth and development when access to capital can be particularly challenging to identify and source 
especially for entrepreneurs who come from disadvantaged regions and or backgrounds. And last but not least, um, we are also requesting authorization to use $35 million for additional funds to, for the New York State Innovation Venture Capital Fund that will create a larger capital base to expand on ESD's already existing and successful direct investment fund program for companies that are seed to Series B stage of, of uh, financing needs. We're working to get each of these programs launched and the application portals no later than mid-November released. And I look forward to answering any questions that you might have about any of these programs. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, does anybody have any questions uh, for Jennifer on these programs? No, uh, we have not received any uh, public comments on this item uh, either. Uh, so I will move it. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Um, all, in, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Uh, Elizabeth, that wraps up your three items under your yes. division. Yeah, thank you. All right, we're going to go to the project section uh, of our agenda today, uh, starting with uh, the Western New York region. And uh, I believe we have uh, Karen Utz, and she's our ESD Western New York Regional Director for an item up in Chautauqua. Uh, good morning, Chairman Ma. Thank you. Good morning, directors. The directors are asked to approve a grant of a million dollars to Regina Food Products, Inc. to be funded from the Regional Council Capital Fund Round 8. Rosina is a privately held family-owned business founded in 1963. Originally, the company operated from a single storefront location in Buffalo, manufacturing meat sausage products that it sold to neighborhood meat markets, grocery stores, and restaurants. Rosina then launched its pre-cooked meatball line and began distributing products nationwide. Rosina Holding Inc. and its affiliates made a series of strategic acquisitions which augmented Rosina's brand strategy while establishing an international division in Cheektowaga, New York. Rosina now markets its products to retail and food service industries throughout North America, as well as internationally. 69% of its products are sold to companies located outside of New York State. The 73,245,000 project included brownfield remediation of 15 acres involved the construction of a 105,000 square foot protein manufacturing plant located in West Seneca, New York, and included a $23 million investment in a new high-speed state-of-the-art production line for the manufacture of a variety of frozen meatballs, sliced sausages, and toppings. The increased capacity of the new plant will allow a large amount of product that is presently co-packed in Chicago to be moved and produced locally in Western New York. As a result of this project, Rosita retained 456 jobs statewide and it exceeded its commitment of 40 new jobs at the project location, having created 153 new jobs. I'm happy to answer any questions. Great, Karen. Are the 153 jobs um, statewide as well, or are they all in Cheektowaga? They're at the project location. Uh, sounds great. Um, any other questions for Karen? If not, I will move it. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, next up is Paul Tronalone. Uh, Vice President for Planning and Policy in the Western New York region, and he has two items for us. Uh, good morning, Chairman. Good morning, directors. Uh, this morning, for your consideration, you're being asked to adopt a uh, general project plan and a $2.3 million grant to the Michigan Street African American Heritage Corridor Commission to acquire a building at 136 to 146 Broadway at the corner of Michigan Street on the east side of Buffalo to undertake limited rehab of that building's mechanical systems and to engage an architecture and engineering consultant to assist in 
planning for that and other future projects along the corridor. Now, the corridor was for, or the commission was formed in 2007 with the state's designation of this heritage corridor to coordinate with its individual anchor institutions and to jointly plan for and market for these resources. As part of, of ESD's Eastside Corridors Economic Development Fund, we allotted over $7 million to the commission and the corridor's anchor institutions, a portion of which has been used for a first round of stabilization for some of the historic sites and to undertake a public process to adopt a strategic action plan. Now, that plan is guiding the remaining funds we have allocated, and it's also serving as the basis for additional, uh, an additional combined $30 million in state and philanthropic funding under a new regional revitalization partnership in western New York that Governor Hochul announced this past June. The grant being considered today uh, is called for in that adopted strategic plan and will allow the commission to establish its first permanent home along the corridor itself for its office operations and also near-term staging for visiting tour buses in the property's parking lot. It will also provide consultant support to help scope out and do detailed cost ass assessments uh, for other future plan projects in the adopted plan. So with this item, I'll stop to answer any questions, or I can just keep going to the other item, Chairman. Um, since um, we have to approve them uh, individually, uh, we'll take them one at a time. Uh, any questions for Paul on this item? Hearing none, I will move it. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any other comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Uh, Paul, proceed with the second item, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, for the second item, the directors are being asked to adopt a general project plan and a $950,000 grant to 662 Fillmore LLC, which is a holding company owned by the Buffalo Brewing Company, an established microbrewery in the city of Buffalo. Now, the grant will be used towards a $6.9 million two-phase project to renovate a long-abandoned former Schreiber Brewery building in the Broadway Fillmore District on Buffalo's east side. Now, the 30,000-square-foot building there will be used to house a new expanded beer production facility for Buffalo Brewing and its commercial brewing tank manufacturing work, a taproom restaurant and a tasting room, a brewing museum that highlights Buffalo's long history of beer making, along with the company's offices, commercial space, and a residence in the complex. The building is strategically located in the midst of a number of concurrent ESD-funded projects in East Buffalo, like the revitalization of the city's Broadway market and the Buffalo Central Terminal, and a host of other small business upgrade projects. As well, the project was recently recommended locally for funding under the state's Downtown Revitalization Initiative Program in the Broadway Fillmore neighborhood that was drafted just this past July. And with that, I'll answer your questions. Great. We like to approve breweries and uh, <laughs> great uh, you know, new business in our state over the last few years, um, really growing you know, from Buffalo down to Long Island. Uh, great for our tourism um, communities as well. Um, I will uh, uh, move this. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, are there any comments for or questions to Paul? What's the apartment? for the brewmaster and owner of the company that he will live in the actual facility that he's managing. Great, thank you. It's a, Any other questions? It's a medium-sized company that's a mom and pop. <laughs> okay, so there's a motion, there's a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, thank you, Paul. We'll move up on to the North Country region. Uh, where Stephen Hunt, our regional director, uh, will have a, an item for us. Good afternoon, Chair, and Chairman and Directors. Today I'm presenting one project uh, from the North Country. We're seeking board authorization for an upstate revitalization initiative grant of $626,000 to the Saranac Lake Civic Center to be used for a portion of a $6.75 million construction and renovation project uh, to upgrade their facility in preparation to host the 2023 World University Games uh, curling events. Uh, upgrades include exterior and interior renovations, structural reinforcement, the addition of new uh, lobby space, additional locker rooms, storage space, electrical plumbing, heating, and mechanical upgrades, 
site improvements and refrigeration and HVAC improvements uh, necessary to make hosting this world-class event possible. In July of 2021, the ESD Board of Directors approved a $4.5 million grant to the Saranac Lake Civic Center for portions of this project. Uh, Saranac Lake Civic Center is working to meet the requirements of the World University Games, but increases in the cost of construction in a tightly compressed time frame have uh, uh, threatened the project. Uh, Saranac Lake Civic Center requested an additional grant of $626,000 so that the project can be com uh, successfully completed. Uh, the North Country Regional Economic Development Council has supported this item. The project is in alignment with the Regional Council's Upstate Revitalization Initiative Plan and the Council's strategy to strength, strengthen the, the region's global sports brand by attracting international sporting events that would stimulate private investment and job growth and spark the refurbishment of sports and hospitality activities. It's also consistent with Executive Order 185, reflecting the state support of the World University Games. Uh, the project is currently in the construction stage with an estimated completion date of December 2022 and the Winter uh, World University Games to be held in January 2023. Um, while Lake Placid will be the base for the games, other communities like Saranac Lake will host these competitive events. Uh, thus, economic impact is expected to be more regional in nature. With that, I'd be happy to take uh, any questions. Steve, with this investment and prior uh, investments made um, and supported by our governor, um, do we stand a reasonable chance to attract uh, an Olympics back up to the Lake Placid, you know, Lake, Lake Saranac area again? <laughs> uh, I don't know that I'd be qualified to answer that question. I would say. <laughs> <clears throat> It would be great. Yeah. Uh, it would be great. Uh, we, boom for we the state. Need more, um, we would rooms, need more rooms. What more rooms? Yeah. Is that is that we, that's, that's they, a challenge up there? That I would say that we are already attracting other um, other uh, international games uh, to the region based upon uh, some of the groundwork uh, put down great. with so this. These investments this are worthwhile, and yeah. as you said, we're having the World University Games and. So um, that's great. Um, so uh, thanks for clarifying that. Any other questions for Steve? Hearing none, I will move it. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. And again, uh, this and the other two items that Paul raised, uh, there were no public comments on either uh, that have been received uh, by ESD. <laughs> Okay, moving down to the capital region, uh, Michael Yavoli, our regional director, uh, has two items for us to uh, approve. Michael. Good morning, thank you, Chairman Law, directors. Uh, the first project I have, I will be requesting the directors approve a $600,000 grant to the Children's Museum of Saratoga for a portion of the renovation costs associated with the redevelopment of the historic Lincoln Bath Building and Saratoga Spa State Park. The project was a CREDC Round 9 priority project with a total project cost of $3.1 million. The Children's Museum of Saratoga was founded in 1990. The museum occupied various locations in downtown Saratoga. In November 2001, the museum purchased and moved to 69 Caroline Street. After 20 years on Caroline Street, expanded programming and increased visitation forced the museum to look for new space once again, bringing them to the Lincoln Baths Building. The notable historic structure owned by New York State Parks sits at the entrance to Saratoga Spa State Park. The site has a history based on the presence of, Lincoln, of the Lincoln Mineral Springs. The current structure was completed in 1930 after the previous wooden bathhouse was destroyed by fire. At the time, the new Lincoln Bathhouse was considered the largest bathhouse in the world. Prior to the grant project, the bathhouse remained largely vacant for decades. The only other occupants currently are the state park police and state court administrative offices. In completing the project, the grantee renovated 4,000 square feet of space on the ground floor, 8,000 square feet of space on the second floor, and an additional 4,000 square foot discovery area in one of the building's courtyard spaces. These two wings had been empty for more than 40 years. The museum once again returned the Lincoln Bath Building to public use. Construction on the project was completed and it officially opened July 2022. The project will allow the museum to secure its economic future, allowing them to maximize their ability to serve over 84,000 children in pre-K through fifth grade. 
2022, the museum also merged with the Children's Museum of Science and Technology, at the time based in RPI's Tech Park, furthering its reach into the core of the capital region. The new location will allow increased visitation, especially during the height of Saratoga's robust summer tourism season. This was evident when Ross leaving from I Love New York helped cut the ribbon when the museum opened officially uh, just prior to Saratoga's 2022 track meet. It's consistent with the CREDC's core strategy, which is strengthening communities at their core. Move on. Um, next up, I'm requesting the directors approve a $425,000 grant, the 430 Franklin LLC, for a portion of the construction and renovation costs associated with the redevelopment of the former Cone Building at 430 Franklin Street in downtown Schenectady. The project is a round four downtown revitaliz revitalization initiative project. Schenectady was the winner of the round four DRI initiative for the capital region. The project was selected in 2019 for the total project cost of just over $2.5 million. Uh, Franklin, 430 Franklin LLC, uh, formerly uh, Schenectady Hardware and Electric, was established as a direct real estate arm for the company. The grantee renovated 17,000 square feet of space, creating a mixed-use building with ground floor retail and second floor office space. The project included the demolition of all interior materials as well as complete environmental remediation and exterior facade replacement and enhancements. The project was completed in October 2021. The building sits directly across from the city's historic city hall, and it also sits at the gateway to the downtown's popular pedestrian mall along J Street. The project has allowed for the revitalization of a long vacant building into a mixed-use space that will diversify the economy, grow the job base, and increase retail choices in downtown Schenectady. This is consistent with the CREDC's core strategy, which is strengthening its community at their core and, and been building vibrant cities for businesses and families. Take any questions. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Michael. Um, are there any questions from Michael on either the Saratoga or the Schenectady projects? Here and none, we need to uh, take up two separate uh, Votes and we have not received any comments from the public on either of these items And so we'll take on staff's recommendations. So for the Saratoga project. I will move it. Is there a second second? second. Um, and, uh, all in favor Aye. 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 any opposed the motion carries uh, for the Schenectady uh, item uh, I will move it. Is there a second second, second. Uh, all in favor? Aye any opposed the motion carries uh, thank you, Michael. Both those items were approved. We'll move, we move back uh, west to the Southern Tier region, uh, Southwest. Um, Robert Sweet, our regional director. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and board directors. Uh, for the board's consideration this morning, we have four projects. The first two are URI, Urban Revitalization Initiative funded projects. And as with most URI projects, this source of funding is reserved for those projects that are usually large, uh, are capital intensive, and whose uh, reach goes beyond the region, goes beyond the state. In the case of our first entry, the Valor Glass Capital request uh, for Corning Inc. is actually has global implications. Back in 2017, a six million dollar URI was approved with the support of the Southern Tier Regional Economic Development Council and ESD to assist Corning in the development of a new pharmaceutical glass vial. This is in advance of the onset of the pandemic, but its timing could have been better. So the money was to be used for renovations to the facility, uh, project set, and the purchase of machinery equipment to produce the new glass vial. To date, over 100 million of vials have been uh, produced. Uh, that's equivalent to, to uh, accommodating about a billion doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. These vials have been used by both Pfizer and Moderna in the fight against the global pandemic. So the reach for this project, as, as the URI program is hopes to do, is, is certainly beyond the region, the state, and national, and globally. So what we're being asked to, uh, to do is, is fund $6 million of a total project cost of $63.5 million for hard assets, uh, 
renovation and the, uh, and the purchase of machinery and equipment. In exchange, uh, Corning will create 133 jobs. The current job total is 141. So they've completed the cap. They've completed the capital project. Expenditures have been made, and they have. Uh, they're on their way on their trajectory. Trajectory of an eventual total employment of 194. Great. Um, sounds exciting, uh, Robert. Uh, we'll take these one at a time. Um, so, uh, any questions for Robert on this? We haven't received any comments from the public. Uh, so I will move it. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. The motion carries. Uh, next item, Robert. The next item is our second URI project. Uh, this is located in the village of Johnson City in the county of Broome. It's a $159 million plus project. The village of Johnson City, trying to give some geographic context, is uh, central in a contiguous urban area that includes the city of Binghamton, village of Johnson City, and the, the town of Union, which is the village of Endicott, uh, where the, uh, as, as our, as our uh, CEO mentioned earlier, the BU Battery New York project will be situate. Johnson, this is, constitutes the largest investment in the village of Johnson City since the 1920s when the Endicott Johnson Shoe Complex uh, was was created. We have approved $30 million or allocated $30 million in URI funding to assist in the renovation construction of the medical campus, which is centered on the pharmacy school and in immediate proximity, the Decker School of Nursing. Again, as with URI projects, uh, this has a size, scope, and reach, in particular with the nursing school, that, uh, that goes beyond the region and, and, uh, and, and throughout the entire state, but providing training for badly needed healthcare personnel, especially nursing, uh, throughout our region and throughout our state. So the project is well on its way, uh, and we're asking you for consideration of the uh, $30 million approval. Great. Thank you, Robert. Sounds like a very large, uh, important project. Uh, for the region. Uh, Binghamton is one of our finest uh, universities in the SUNY system. Um, so, uh, you know, good luck with this. Uh, any questions for Robert on this program? Uh, hearing none, we have not received any comments from the public. Is there, I will move this. Is there a second? Second. Second. Great. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Uh, the motion carries. Next item, Robert. Next item is, is not a URI. It is a uh, round five CFA ESD grant that was approved and recommended by the Southern Tier REDC to do infrastructure improvements in Tioga County to develop a uh, multi-acre site for a variety of uses. The total project cost is 1248000 of which ESD capital grant constitutes 350000 the project is complete, um, and the site is currently uh, ready for development. In fact, because of the placement of the, the infrastructure for this project, a adjoining Owego Square housing project, which is a 92-unit mixed income rental development, is underway. But for the completion of the infrastructure work, that housing program in which uh, housing, badly needed affordable housing will be provided to, to, to people in Tioga County ranging from AMIs of 30% to 80% would not have proceeded without our investment in this project. So we ask for uh, the board's consideration for approval. Thank you. So now, Robert, we popped over I and went to J and we skipped over the Chenango County item and went to Tioga County. I'm sorry, Chairman. I, I, I grabbed the wrong one. I, I had them numbered, too. I just want to make sure all the board members realize we're, we're voting on item J, uh, which is the Tioga County. And, um, you know, just like um, uh, this project um, happens on Long Island all the time, without sewers, you can't really have good economic development. Uh, people take that infrastructure for granted, but critically important. Uh, so uh, happy to move this. Is there a second? 
Second. Second by John. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. The motion carries. Let's go back to item I now, Robert, uh, for the Chenango County project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a uh, 21, nearly $22 million project, of which we have a $1.5 million capital grant that was uh, approved by the Southern Tier REDC in round nine through the CFA process. As many of you know, uh, the Southern Tier is a, is a fairly rural region. Uh, Shenango County, in which this, pro this project is situated, is particularly rural. And in fact, the uh, Shenango Memorial Hospital, which is in Norwich, which is the largest place, and it's, it's, it's not large by, by downstate standards uh, in, in Shenango County, is the only hospital uh, for that entire county. In fact, not only do they operate the hospital, they operate a number of satellite facilities in the county because of uh, access to, to, to medical care uh, is, is crucial and it's, it's distant, the next hospitals being in, in the city of Binghamton. So they needed to upgrade the hospital, in particular their emergency department. They needed to enlarge it. They needed to have more diagnostic equipment and tools. Um, and in recognition of the needs of, of, of affordable, accessible, and uh, robust health care in our rural areas, the uh, Southern Tier REDC uh, proposed and approved their grant request for $1.5 million as part of the $22 million expansion project. Thank you, Robert. Um, any questions on this item? If not, I will move it. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Uh, that uh, that completes uh, your Southern Tier presentation. Correct. I, I didn't I didn't skip anything or, or leapfrog anything, Mr. Chairman. We're all set. Very, very good. Um, yeah, that's fine. We got it all covered. We'll head down to the New York City region, and we have Joe Tazewell with us here in person. And so, uh, Joe, you have an item for us? I do, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning. This is a request to approve a $1.4 million grant to Queens Community House in connection with an uh, $11.6 million modernization of its Forest Hills Community Center, Center building and construction and fit-out of a new annex. The combined space, totaling 20,000 square feet, will allow Queens Community House to significantly expand it, its programs and services that, it's, that it provides to local families, including a range of workforce development, neighborhood strengthening, social services, and child care. The project was designated as a priority project by the New York City Regional Council in REDC Round 9 and is in alignment with the Council's workforce development and child care strategies. Queens Community House was founded in 1975 as the Forest Hills Community Center in the wake of a conflict over the development of public housing in that neighborhood. Since its founding, the organization has grown into a borough-wide organization that serves 20,000 people annually through 34 locations in 14 neighborhoods. Its services include job readiness and training programs. English to speakers of other languages and languages instruction, immigrant legal assistance, after school programs, adult uh, day services for memory impaired uh, seniors. It also provides training and technical assistance to a network of 127 registered and licensed family child care providers throughout Queens that serve over 800 children. The newly renovated center will be fit out with fully accessible ramps mechanical doors, ADA-compliant bathrooms, new meeting spaces, and an elevator. The new annex will provide more uh, uh, language classes and programs for youth. The program uh, and project is expected to be completed by the end of February 2023. Happy to take any questions. Great. Uh, thank you, Joe. So the primary use uh, uh, for this facility will be for child care? Uh, not not necessarily the primary use, but that is one of the uses. One Correct. of the uses. Yes. Great. All right. Uh, any questions for Joe? Hearing none, I will move it. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> any opposed? None. Uh, the motion carries. 
Uh, on to uh, Long Island, uh, Carol Longworth, you're up. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, good morning, directors. Uh, we're asking the directors this morning to approve a regional council capital grant of up to $650,000 to the town of Islip to pay for a portion of the cost of renovation for the ground vehicle transportation facility at MacArthur Airport in Suffolk County. The total project cost is $3,250,000, and the project is complete. This was a round seven priority project for the Long Island Regional Council, as it was consistent with the council's strategic plan to support tourism in the region. MacArthur Airport, which is owned by the town of Islip, is the region's commercial airport. It serves 1.2 million passengers annually. There's three major airlines and provides nonstop service to seven cities and connections to hundreds of other destinations. The airport has a multi-phase plan to upgrade and modernize its facilities to improve the efficiencies and customer service and experience. One of these upgrades was to create a centralized ground transportation center so that all the car rental facilities, bus and shuttle service, taxis and car services would be located in one building. This is standard in the airline industry and provides safety as well as convenience to the customers. To accomplish this project, the town renovated a former FAA service building that was on the property that had been unused for 15 years. This project included complete renovation of this building with new walls, floors, ceilings, energy-efficient lighting, new IT and communications infrastructure, bathrooms, backup generator, H uh, HVAC, and a new paved parking lot for over 300 rental cars. The project is complete and open to visitors in April 2022. Can I answer any questions? Great. Thank you, Kara. Um, my Long Island biases will show now. If you haven't ever used Long Island MacArthur Airport, it's a gem. It's so easy and pleasant uh, to use. And uh, so it's a, a great asset for the region. And when I spoke about how great um, the staff here is at ESD, you know, I've had the pleasure of working with Kara for, I chaired it for 11 years, and I think Kara was there for nine or close to 10 of those years, and she is uh, emblematic of the professionalism of the ESD staff, and she does a great job for ESD on Long Island. Uh, so uh, thank you, Kara. Um, any, uh, any other questions for Kara? If not, I will move this item. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Uh, the motion carries. Uh, thank you, Kara. We, we now have uh, a couple, or one at least, um, at the direction of projects. And we have uh, Simone uh, Bethune uh, to brief us on this project. listed in the New York State budget that enhance the state's communities through cultural, educational, research and development, and civic organizations. These projects originate from the governor, the New York State Assembly, or the Senate, and ESD is named to administer the funding. ESD does not select the recipients of the funding. Today we are requesting board approval for a $500,000 grant to the Brooklyn Alliance Incorporated, the development partner of the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. This local assistance assembly grant was initiated in the New York State budget in fiscal year 2020-2021 at the direction of assembly member Peter Abate of the 49th district. The Brooklyn Alliance completed an ESD application in February 2022, which was subsequently reviewed by ESD staff and approved to move forward. Each year, the Brooklyn Alliance serves over 10,000 businesses and individuals in the borough through a targeted portfolio of programs that include business development and assistance, workforce development, healthcare, and tourism. These grant funds will be used to support various programmatic and administrative expenses, including the following three economic development programs. Uh, Brooklyn Goes Global, the first, a marketing and export assistance program for Brooklyn manufacturers. Good Help, a boutique job placement service and the third, Brooklyn Bridge to Employment Career Expos, a series of career fair, fairs focusing on the hiring needs of small neighborhood businesses and local job seekers. Funding will be applied to the program initiatives through December 2022. And I can take any questions. Great, uh, thank you, Simone. Uh, any questions for Simone on this? 
Uh, we received no comments from the public and uh, let the record reflect that we did not receive any comments from the public for either the Long Island project or for the New York City project that Joe uh, shared with us. Um, uh, hearing uh, no questions, uh, I will move this. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you, Benson. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Uh, the motion carries. Thank you, Simone. Uh, New York Ventures, um, Jennifer Teagan is back with us for a couple of other items. Jennifer? Thanks. Yeah, good morning again. Thank you, Chairperson Law. Um, as you're aware, New York Ventures regularly brings forward proposals uh, to this board for authorizing investment opportunities to support the growth of the innovation sector in the state. When we seek out these investments, we do so in a way that considers the importance of providing greater access to capital across all regions of New York, but also to those founders who've been traditionally poorly served by the private capital markets. And further, we also work hard to align our investments strategically in ways that not only support job growth, but also the development of key industry sectors to help develop a robust economy across important and critical innovation sectors for New Yorkers, as well as more broadly for the United States and the world. Um, the supporting the innovation sector is what will continue to create a thriving economy well into the future for the state and our residents, and it's a critically important source for job growth and economic development. And I just wanted to highlight a recent report about the innovation economy, specifically in New York City, that noted that the technology sector now actually accounts for over 5% of the city's total private sector employment. And since 2010, has a growth rate for jobs of 142% which actually accounts for 17% 17, 17 of the city's entire job growth during that period. And so we thank you again for um, allowing us to do the work that we do to support the innovation sector in the state. And with that, I'm excited to share with you proposals for three investment opportunities this month from my team. First is New York Ventures is seeking authorization for a follow-on investment of up to a million dollars in Toggle which is a Long Island, Holbrook, New York, robotics-enabled construction materials company. Toggle provides customers with custom-built steel rebar structures that are used to reinforce concrete structures, and they do this using robotics. The company is headquartered with an R&D facility in Holbrook, where it currently employs six members of its technical staff as well as its CEO, and it recently signed a lease there for an 8,800-square-foot facility where all of its production cells will continue to be built, tested, and qualified. It also has a production facility in Pennsylvania at a former steel plant, which allows it to have rail and truck access to facilitate the shipping of its product across the Northeast and Canada. The company has shipped over 150 tons uh, to three different customers to date and has another 700 tons planned for the rest of the year. Um, importantly, the you know, construction and use of rebar on a project site is known to be one of the most dangerous and time-intensive jobs for any project. And one customer with whom we spoke noted that Toggle is saving them up to 10 times what it typically spends on rebar and labor combined. And it has importantly made the job site a significantly safer place for the workers. Um, in 2019, New York Ventures provided $100,000 to Toggle for through its seed fund, the Accelerate New York Fund. And last June, we also provided $150,000 into its $8 million Series A financing. Um, from an impact lens, not only is this company planning to continue to grow in Long Island, but its founding team is diverse and committed to hiring a diverse workforce. It is also supporting the build out of much needed infrastructure in this country in a way that provides for safer working conditions greater efficiency and lower cost. Uh, with that, we're requesting a million dollars into the $3 million Series A bridge funding round for this company. And if you like, I'll just keep going with the next two investments. Uh, hold on a sec, Jen. Um, can, we do all right. all, can we do all three of these in one There's resolution? Presentations, but then if you can take uh, separate votes on each. We, we have to do separate votes, so why don't we do the votes right after the presentation, <laughs> so. Um, and does anybody have any questions for Jennifer on this? Uh, investment in Toggle. So, Jennifer, this is our third investment in this company? It is, yes. And um, do we have any requirements in our 
uh, in our investments that require the companies to stay in New York, um, uh, you know, sort of like what IDAs do, and then if they decide to leave, then we recapture the funds, or is that is that something that's not permitted? <laughs> Um, no, we have a side letter with every single one of these investments that requires them to stay in the state for up to three or for at least three years post investment. And if they leave prior to that time, then we recapture the the funds we've provided them. Great, terrific. I know other states uh, try to steal our upstart uh, companies, and it's great that we're investing in them because we know other states are doing that too, and we need to remain competitive. So. Um, any other questions for Jennifer on this uh, in, uh, investment in Toggle? Uh, if not, uh, I will move it. Uh, is there a second? A second. Uh, no comments from the public on this item. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, the next uh, item, Jennifer. Great. So second investment opportunity that we are requesting for board authorization today is an investment of up to $500,000 in Buffalo, New York-based Kick Further. Kick Further is a company that re relocated to Buffalo from Boulder after it received funding as one of the winners of the ESC-supported 43 North Business Plan competition. Kick Further helps to um, support small and medium retailers, both in-store and online, to meet the growing customer demand for their goods by providing them a marketplace where investors on the platform help to fund the production for those retailers and once that consignment inventory is sold, those investors are repaid, um, you know, their investment capital uh, along with a profit. The company's platform has 120 item checklists that evaluate the funding needs and risk level of these retailers and uh, allows for a more stable IRR for its investors. The model has demonstrated great success for retailers who often have trouble getting this type of financing from the traditional market as well as for investors who are making a stable and profitable return off of their investments. Kick Further is raising $7 million in a convertible note equity round, allowing it to further expand marketing and sales efforts, building out its technology as well as its team. Uh, as I noted a, a minute ago, they, the company received $500,000 previously from ESD via the 43 North competition, and we're looking to support it with an additional $500,000 in its current funding round. Uh, the, you know, 43 North and Buffalo has become a significant uh, growth opportunity in the economy and the, uh, for, you know, the economy and innovation sector in that region. Um, Kick Further now employs 37 people, uh, 27 of whom are based in New York, and it, compl it plans to continue to grow that number to over 150 across, uh, over the next two years in the Western New York region. And with that, I'll take any questions that people have about Kick Further. Uh, any any questions? Jennifer? No. Uh, sounds uh, exciting. The 43 North competition has really gone well over the years, and uh, Long Island will be starting a competition uh, thanks to Governor Hochul, who provided funds for a similar type of program on the island. So we'll have to learn lessons from 43 North. And I'm sure the Buffalo staff will work with the Long Island staff and share best practices on how to run these competitions. Uh, so that's great to hear. Uh, hearing no questions, we have no comments from the public on this item. I will move it. Is there a second? Second. Second, thank you. Hilda, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Jennifer, the last item. Great. So we're also seeking authorization for a $1.5 million investment in the $12.5 million Series A funding round of a company called Exotanium, which is based here in Ithaca, New York, where I am also located. Exotanium is a cloud resource optimization and management platform that uses technology that was developed by computer scientists at Cornell University in combination with AI and machine learning to help enterprise companies reduce spending on storage in the cloud. The company has a diverse team that is led by Dr. Hakim Weatherspoon and has employees in both Ithaca and Buffalo. With companies spending on average over $115 million for cloud storage, up to a third of that spend is wasted on excess space and downtime. Exotanium's cloud resource management optimization platform reduces that spending 
and helps with operational security and performance with its cloud premise control technology. The company has early revenues from pilot customers and will be using these funds to support company operations, hiring its sales and engineering talent, as well as marketing its, its uh, platform and for the development of the technology. The company currently employs 15 people across both Ithaca and Buffalo, and it plans to continue to grow that team in both of those locations. This company has not previously received any support from ESC, and we're currently seeking board approval to authorize an investment of one and a half million dollars to support the growth of the company. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. Thank you. Any questions for, Je uh, for Jennifer? No. Uh, we have not, not received any questions or comments from the public on this item. So I will move it. Is there a second? By John. Uh, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, Jennifer, does that complete your presentation? I am done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. All right. Um, last up are our administrative actions. Doug uh, Janice uh, will present eight items to us. And for these items, we get to do one umbrella vote for all eight items. Uh, so uh, I'll hand it over to you, Doug. Uh, thank you, and good morning, directors. Uh, as a reminder, as the chairman just noted, in order to help streamline our board meetings, we've previously implemented uh, an oral presentation uh, process in summary form uh, in connection with these administrative actions. Uh, you receive a full reset of a full set of the written descriptive materials for each of these items, as you have for this meeting. And rather than having individual oral presentations made on each, I'm going to provide a brief summary of the items. And at the conclusion of the summary, we'll entertain any questions or comments the directors might have. Uh, as noted earlier, we did not receive any uh, comments from the public on any of these items. And then following my presentation, any questions, the chair will call for a motion to improve the entire slate of administrative actions uh, for this meeting. That would be items 5A through 5H. So the eight items uh, submitted for your consideration today and for which you have already received written materials are summarized as follows. Our first administrative item today is item 5A relative to an authorization to make a statutory payment pursuant to the New York State Electric Generation Facility Cessation Mitigation Program. The board is being asked to approve a payment pursuant to the Electric Generation Facility Cessation Mitigation Program to the village of Buchanan in an amount of $1,095,303. The payment will offset a reduction in property tax revenue to the village due to the closure of the Indian Point Energy Center in April of 2021. Approval of this payment will bring total disbursements from the fund to approximately $54 million of the total $140 million budgeted for this program. The next item, uh, item 5B, is relative to an authorization to enter into contracts for design, implementation, and operation related to the Business Growth Accelerator Program. The Division of Minority and Women's Business Development is seeking authorization to enter into four contracts for a total amount of $1,050,000 for the design, implementation, and operation of the Business Growth Accelerator Program. Focusing on construction service and construction consultant firms, this 12-month training program will cover six New York State economic development regions and provide intensive business and tactical assistance to up to 120 New York State certified minority and women-owned business enterprises. The program's source of funding is a New York State budget appropriation for the minority and women-owned business development and lending program. Next is item 5C, relative to the authorization to amend an existing lease agreement with Destiny USA Holdings LLC uh, at the Welcome Center in Syracuse. We're seeking an authorization to amend an existing lease agreement that would allow the continued operations of the New York State Welcome Center in Syracuse. The current five-year lease between ESD and Destiny USA Holdings, the owner of the Destiny USA Mall in Syracuse where the center is located, is expiring at the end of 2022. 
Corporation is seeking to extend that contract by five years, making it run through December of 2027. The total value of the five-year lease would be $488,579, which will be funded by an existing New York State budget appropriation dedicated to tourism and business attraction marketing efforts. The next two items, 5D and 5E, are seeking authorizations to enter into two contracts for the work to be completed under the previously authorized $45 million grant from the Federal Economic Development Administration to support the state's travel, tourism, and outdoor recreation sectors as we recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the first item is seeking board approval to enter into a contract with Yoko Inc. doing business as live stories to administer the New York State EDA Tourism Partner Subawards grant program in an amount not to exceed $750,000. At its April meeting, the directors approved guidelines to create the New York State EDA Tourism Partner Sub-Awards Grant Program, where $14.25 million of the state's federal EDA funds will be awarded by ESD to local and regional destination marketing organization partners across the state. Given the size of the program, the high number of grants that will be administered, and a need to quickly disperse grants as fairly and efficiently as possible, ESD is seeking to enter into a contract with Live Stories as a third-party administrator of the grants. An RFP for this work was posted on May 24, 2022, and one proposal was received in total. After careful review, the scoring committee agreed to select Live Stories as the proposed administrator firm. Live Stories will vet and confirm the eligibility of all applicants, implement a system to prevent fraud, to prevent, uh, fraud and identity theft, Establish a reporting system that will support ESD's required reporting to the federal EDA and disperse grants in a fair, efficient, and expedited manner. The contract is expected to remain in effect until November 7, 2025, based on the final deadline for payments established by the federal government. Uh, with respect to item 5E, we are requesting the director's authorization to enter into a contract with Break the Ice Media as a tourism travel trade consultant in an amount not to exceed $7 million. EDA authorizes the division to use up to $7 million to contract with a consulting firm to work with the I Love New York team in engaging the travel trade industry to pursue meetings, conferences, events, amateur sports, groups, and international tourism through sales and marketing efforts that will encourage travel professionals to choose New York State for their clients and customers. On May 27, 2022, ESD issued an RFP for a firm to assist with this effort, given the breadth of work related to adding three new tourism segments to our tourism efforts and the opportunity to enhance our current international tourism promotion activities. Two proposals were received. The scoring committee determined that Break the Ice Media's proposal scored high enough to merit selection as the preferred vendor pending today's approval. The second proposal achieved a much lower score that did not adequately address the scope of services. Break the Ice Media is a private New York State certified women-owned business that provides consulting and training services for organizations and businesses in the tourism industry. In cooperation with I Love New York, they will help develop a schedule of activities to engage the travel trade that will include sales missions, activating at key travel trade shows, sales calls, familiarization tours, and trade advertising. The contract is expected to remain in effect until November 7, 2025, based on the final deadline for payments established by the federal government. Our next item is 5F, relative to an authorization to amend a contract with AKRF for the Belmont Park Redevelopment Civic and Land Use Improvement Project. This request is for authorization to amend the contract with the firm AKRF to continue to provide environmental consulting services in connection with the Belmont Park Redevelopment Civic and Land Use Improvement Project. The consultant will continue to monitor construction activities on site for compliance with the Memorandum of Environmental Commitments. The contract will be extended by six months through June of 2025 and amended for an amount of $1,420,000, including contingencies bringing the total contract amount to $6,270,000. This 
the amended contract will continue to be funded in its entirety from the Imprest account funded by the project developer. Our next item, 5G, is relative to the authorization to amend the contract with Bryant Rubino LLP for the Bronx Psychiatric Center project. That directors are being asked to approve amendments to the Bryant Rubino LLP contract for legal services related to the disposition of the Bronx Psychiatric Center. The amendments would extend the contract for an additional year and increase the contract amount by an additional $100,000. The contract is paid for with developer funds. And our eighth and final administrative item, 5H, is relative to an authorization to amend a contract with Avalam Inc. to provide enhancements and modifications to the Microsoft Dynamics system. The IT department is requesting to amend a contract with Avalam Inc. for continued maintenance and enhancement of the corporation's Microsoft Dynamics 365 platform. This amendment will extend the service term by three years and increase the amount of the current contract by $488,750 for a new total contract amount of $977,500. Since the execution of the original contract, multiple departments have begun utilizing this platform for programmatic needs, extending Avalam's responsibilities beyond the original scope of work. The additional service hours under this, new, under this new amendment will ensure that the necessary modifications and enhancements, enhancements to the platform will be undertaken to meet the needs of the corporation. The funding source will be corporate funds. And with that, I will now turn this meeting back over to our chair who will call for any questions or comments you may have on any of these items before calling for a vote. We also have item related staff on the line today as well to take any questions. Thank you. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, Doug. Are there, are there any questions for Doug on any of these items? D Doug, I had one question on the uh, Tanner Hempstead um, item. Uh, just to clarify, uh, the developer makes the payment to ESD and then ESD pays the consultant, so these are not state dollars or taxpayer dollars that goes to the consultant? That's correct. On a, a number of projects, we have a similar structure where the developer um, agrees to make certain uh, payments for certain costs, and ESD simply acts as a pass-through. Got it. Thank you. Um, here are no other questions. Uh, we, we've not, we have not received any uh, comments from the public uh, on, the, on any of these items, so I will move them. Is there a second by Sherry? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Uh, thank you, Doug. Um, that concludes our regular business. Is there any other business or any other item that any board members want to raise at this time? Hearing none, our next meeting um, is scheduled for October 20th, should be in person, same place. Uh, we'll have a little bit more lead time um, uh, on that item. And uh, something I've asked Hope to do, I don't know if we'll be ready for the next meeting, uh, but we did this, um, I just spent three years serving on the MTA board, and at um, and, and each meeting after the chairman and the president gave their reports, we always had somebody from staff give us a report on a particular program um, that the agency runs, and it allowed us to learn a little bit more as opposed to just approving all the items, spend a little bit of time, uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, uh, be able to ask questions. And the agency does so many great things and has so many programs, it gets confusing at times. And so Hope is gonna work on an agenda. We'll try to build into future meetings, you know, um, before we get to all the resolutions that we have to approve, that we learn a little bit more, do a little bit of a deeper dive into some of the great programs that ESD is doing. So whether it's ready for October or the following meetings, um, I, I figured I'd share that with you. And if you have any ideas, you know, share it with Hope too. And we'll try, we won't kill us with the agenda, but we'll try to at least put one on the agenda for each meeting going forward. So uh, hearing no other business, uh, I'll move to adjourn. I'm sure there are four seconds uh, on that one. Um, a second, uh, all in favor to adjourn? Aye. Uh, thank you very much. Enjoy this beautiful weather and we'll see you next month.